Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, but today I'm going to be showing you some tips on how to get your editing process a little bit easier. So let's uncover them right now. I've been editing now for a few years now and I'm constantly learning new tips and tricks which I've learned from YouTube videos like this. So I thought I would give you my sort of top tips for editing in Final Cut Pro. So let's get into it. All right, so I've got Final Cut Pro open and I'm gonna show you sort of four to five tips on things that will literally make your life so much easier. So the first tip is to do with your used media. So when you've got a lot of clips in your sort of um, media library, it can be kind of hard to track what parts of clips you've used, which clips you've used. When your projects start to get bigger, it, it starts to get harder and harder to track. Now, one option that I will recommend you do is to have a used media ranges enabled. So the way that you do that is you go up, you go into view, you go into browser, and then make sure you have used media ranges selected. Now, what does this mean? What does this enable me to do? So as you can see, nothing's really changed. I, you know, I've selected it, everything looks the same as normal. Well, the great thing is, is that when I go and select, let's say this part of the clip, and I've put it down into my timeline, I've now got this orange bar right on the bottom of it. So if I click down to this clip, for example, there's no uh, orange bar. That's because I haven't used it in my timeline. On the top here, I've used this whole clip. Now, the great thing is, is that if I went and selected part of this clip, so let's say I deleted this part of the clip, can you see that orange bar has now shortened? Again, if I did a, 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 a bigger cut, for example, so now I've only used half of this clip. So I know that the beginning of half of this clip, I still haven't used. So if I go and drag, let's say that all the way down, it's now reselected that. And now I've got the full clip just over here. So it's really nice to see. So let's delete that and there you go. I've deleted it and it's now only showing the orange part. So this is really useful because when you've got lots of uh, B roll and A roll and everything like that, and it's it sometimes can get difficult to track what you've actually used. Now the next tip that I have is, as you saw, how I was cutting. So let's go into this same clip again. So I've got clips of cars just over here. Now there are two ways that I can edit this clip using keyboard shortcuts. I can either use the default keyboard. Is either I press Command B and that makes a cut. So we all know how that all works, all right? If you've used Final Cut Pro, you know how that works. Or for example, if we wanted to cut this beginning of the clip, we can press the Alt and then the left bracket to cut everything from uh, the left of the uh, playhead. Or if we want to delete everything from the right of the playhead, we press Alt and then right bracket. And then there you go, that's deleted everything from the right. Now, this can kind of get tedious when you're making lots and lots of cuts because you have to press, you know, two buttons to make basically the thing that you want. And, and normally with these buttons, what it does is, is if you press B, it selects the blade tool and then you can use that to cut, but that's not really that useful because then you have to press A again to then go back into the arrow and then go into there, delete, which isn't a good, you know, isn't, isn't great. So what we can do is we can customize this keyboard. So we go into Final Cut Pro, commands and then press customize. As you can see here, I've already got one customized keyboard, but we'll just create a new customized keyboard. So we'll press a customized keyboard, we'll go up, okay. And can you see, we've got default keyboard selectors. So that's what we wanna do. Now, when we make any changes to uh, a, key, a keyboard shortcut, we cannot do it using the keyboard default. So let me explain. So let's start off with the blade tool. So right now, if with no modifier, if I press the B button, what it will do is it will just use the blade tool. And then when we use obviously command and B, okay, that will do the blade, but we don't want that. Okay, we want to switch those two around. So we want the blade tool to be the modified and we want the uh, non-modifier uh, use of the B button to, to blade the clip. So what we do is, is first of all, we want to click that and we want to drag that up. But if we do that, we lose the blade tool function. So what we do is we drag this down somewhere over here, for example, as you can see, it says the keyboard cannot be modified. So what we do is we make a copy. I'm just going to name that test. And then what we want to do is, is we want to drag this blade up to the non-modified keyboard. 
and then drag the blade tool that we had down here up to the uh, command. And then we just get rid of this one so we don't have a duplicate. And there you go, we've now switched those two around. Now let's do the same for our uh, left edge and, and right uh, bracket keyboard. So we'll start off with the left. So the command that we do is, is remember it's alt and then left bracket and or alt and then right bracket. So what we wanna do is, is we wanna change that. So we go into this section here, which is the trim start and we want to switch this one and this one. All right, we wanna switch these two commands. All right, we don't wanna change any of the rest. We just wanna switch these two around. So what we do is, is we select the non-modified. We just drag it somewhere down to the bottom. We select the trim start and we now add it to the um, non-modified and then we drag that one back in place and then get rid of that one just by moving it outside of the box. So let's just do the last one very quickly. Okay, so drag that up and then get, and then copy that over to that one and then delete. There you go. So now let's save it and let's see how much quicker it now is for me to edit this portion of the clip. So let's just delete that one again. All right, let's drag that so we now got a fresh clip. So now when I'm moving my playhead, if I wanted to make a blade cut, all that I have to do is just press B instead of pressing Command and B. I can now just make real quick edits through my clip with one less button, which when you're editing a lot of clips can make a huge difference. Also, if I wanted to delete everything from the right of the keyboard, rather than me pressing Alt and then the bracket. Now, if I just press the bracket, boom, it's now deleted that section. If I want to delete the end of that clip, for example, just over here, I can press right bracket. Okay, so let's get it right there. Right bracket, and now it's deleted that whole thing. Again, one less shortcut for me to also remember all command and you know, whatever. I don't have to worry about that. Those two shortcuts are so, so useful. Let's say we've got this clip just over here. So if I wanted to, let's say, add, uh, let's say this, this random like button, for example, right? And I want to have it going from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Well, typically what you would do is, is you would, you know, select this part of the clip. Let's just select the magnet on. All right, well, I'd select this part of the clip. We go into our inspector. Let's just scale that down just a little bit. And then what I would do is, let's just zoom out of that a little bit so I can see that a little bit better. Perfect. So what I'd do is, is I'd normally keyframe it. So I'd go right all the way to the right, okay, okay. I'll press the keyframe button and then I'll go right to the end of my clip, press one keyframe back and then all the way around. And that's done like so. So now if I play that clip, for example, we're now gonna see a very slow like button sort of gesture playing across the screen. That's great. But let's say I wanted to um, have it now coming from there. Well, now I have to go all the way back to the end of the clip. I now have to go all the way up. Uh, so let's just go all the way up. And you know, this this can get a bit tedious, you know, because it's coming now from sort of the, the top and then it's gonna sort of come all the way you know, it's, it's not really changed anything. It's, it's not good. Well, one thing that we can do is, is if we see this transform tool, we press this transform tool and now it's come up with the path of our track. So now if I wanted to make some changes, I can move this down so I can have it going diagonally. So rather than having to, you know, go in and keyframe all of this in, I can now have it instantly go from one edge of the corner to the other. But for example, let's say I wanted to make some more complex moves. Well, let's say I wanted it to come from this corner, go around down. So, 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 so going across from this corner, going down and across and then down again. Well, normally I'd have to keyframe all of that in. But with this little shortcut, what I can do is, is I can go, okay, so about here, I want it to go down a little bit. Okay. And then from about here, all right, I want it to go up a little bit and there you go. So now we've introduced uh, all those keyframes with just some simple clicks. Let's say I want to change the, the, the curve of it. I select that keyframe just over here. Let's just zoom in just a little bit and see these little dots just over here. I can change the angle of the curve 
depending on how sort of smooth I want it and everything like that. So I can sort of bring that in, I can go up and down and really smooth out. So see this keyframe just over here, I can go back, I can press this little dot just here and I can again, just smooth it out a little bit. So now it's got a slightly flatter plane. So now if we go back, um, my computer's working quite hard <laughs> to, to do this graphic, but can you see now it's sort of going across and then down to where I want it. So that is a really simple way to add really sort of semi-complex sort of movements into your clips without having to really do a lot of uh, keyframing. So that's really nice. Now, the last tip that I want to show you is using adjustment layers for editing your clips. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna show you what an adjustment layer is and why it's so important. So typically, let's just grab, uh, for example, I don't know, th this clip just over here. Now, if I wanted to do any editing to this clip, I would normally have to do it in the, in, in the inspector. So I'd go in, you know, and then I'll apply, you know, let's say, a, a, you know, a color grade. So, you know, we'll bring that down a little bit, you know, just for example, I'm just doing a, a, a silly color grade, all right? So perfect, I really like that color grade. Now, let's say I wanted to so, sort of copy that color grade into the next clip. Well, the thing is I have to go in and then I have to select that other clip and then make those changes. Well, with an adjustment layer, I don't have to worry about any of that because what I can do is, is I can go into my uh, titles and then I find adjustment layer and I've got two here, you know, but what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description for, for this adjustment layer. And what I do is I just drag that adjustment layer right to the bottom onto the top of my clip and now I can make any adjustments to this clip on this actual adjustment layer. So there you go. So for example, let's say I'm really happy with this color grade, obviously not. But now let's say I wanted to uh, copy this over to another clip. So if we go back in and let's just say we want to copy it over to this clip, rather than me having to go in and, and copy this over, what I can just do is simply, is just drag that across, and now I've got that same color grade over on both clips. Now what I can do is, is let's say I've done sort of the first color grading part. Now I can add another adjustment layer on top, and I can make my further adjustment on top. So let's say I wanted to now add a LUT on top, rather than me having to stack each sort of color grade on top onto a single clip, I can now, rather than just adjusting uh, everything, I can now just adjust one individual layer. So for example, let's go into, uh, let's go into LUT up. So custom LUT, we'll drag it into the adjustment layer. My computer's working a little bit hard for that. There you go, all right. So now we've got the adjustment layer. So let's go in and let's just select a random LUT. So uh, let's just go for, I don't know, like a dreamy days. Uh, okay, maybe not that one. Uh, free LUTs, I'm just selecting random one. There you go, neon vibes, there you go, all right. So I really like that, that looks really cool, okay. So now I've applied this same LUT across both clips. So now I've done all my adjustments on these color grades. And now rather than me having, let's say I didn't like that, let's say oh, I've, I've messed it up, I really don't like that adjustment there. I can just go in and delete it and that's it. If I needed to do that for every single clip, that would have been an absolute nightmare because I would have applied that same luck to every individual clip. When you've got lots of clips, that is, an, that is just such a nightmare to have to go in and either deactivate each uh, clip or remove each of those attributes across all those clips. With an adjustment layer, I can make all the color grading adjustments on that particular adjustment layer, and then I can stack those on top. So for example, I can have one adjustment layer for my exposure, I can then have one for my color correction, and then I can have one for my overall look. So now I've got three adjustment layers that I can tweak individually without affecting the other, which is really nice. And then I can sort of move that across all the clips 
with one simple drag. So there are just a few tips on how to speed up your editing process. If you've liked the video, obviously drop me a like. If you wanna see more content, then hit that subscribe button. Also check out these videos just over here and also check out my social medias at Tech Carmoon. Anyway everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.